Today we're going to be working on my full puma, which uh, I've had an unfortunate incident with a tree. As you can see there, got this seam welded right the way around, all the way around the bottom there now. Now I need to open the door and carry it along, on along the inside. Now. That's the uh, first coat of filler primer on there. Looks done it too bad to be fair. You know when you do one of those jobs and you wish you'd never started it? <laughs> this is one of those jobs. Now. I started off at this end as you would have seen from the time lapse there. A little bit of surface corrosion, nothing major. A few scabby bits here and there, no problem at all. Carried on going along. Got a little few scabs, no problem. A little few scabs again. And I came to that. I was like, oh, wasn't expecting there to be a hole there. But it was right below where we did the previous repair. So I thought, oh, maybe the water's been running down inside. And it's rotted that little bit out. So I carried on going. And I got to this, I thought, okay, still underneath that repair. A little bit on the lip, nothing too major. Carried on going, carried on going. And then I came to a nice clean bit, no problem at all. And I thought, okay, no problem. I'll just have to do a little couple of little patches in there, which I wasn't expecting to do. And then I got to the back. Now, as you will know, it has got some rot on the rear arch which has gradually got worse over the years and I should have treated it a long while ago, but I didn't, so anyway, that's what I've come up against at the back here. The whole bottom of the quarter is completely rotten to the point where I can get my hand and fingers inside it. <laughs> right the way along. And I dare say, these bubbles that are on the end here, if I poke them hard enough, they're going to go into holes as well. Look, see, it's just literally falling away. There's nothing left of it. So, a car that I thought was fairly close to being on the road is now miles away. <laughs> so that is not um, ideal. Uh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Feeling dejected.
so the very first project on the channel phase one you would have just seen a few clips from has been completed as far as the original damage is concerned but phase two is now going to be this major rust repair hi everyone welcome back to mech tech you can probably tell by the tone of my voice i am absolutely dreading doing this job i don't know why i think it's because at the moment we've got a semi-complete car and basically i've got to rip off of it apart again and it's kind of been playing on my mind quite a lot which is probably why it's taken quite a long time well over a year now for me to even get the car back in the garage and get it sorted out obviously i've had other projects on the go as well as you would have seen so that has obviously hindered it too but it's a job i've been absolutely dreading i don't know why it's just it just is so I've got to bite the bullet and get it going. So this, get the car up in the air, it's gonna be the first job. I'm gonna get it up level on stands because I want it to be as if it's sitting on the ground on the wheels so that nothing flexes on the body when we're cutting the seal off because obviously the last thing you wanna do is weld it on wonky and then you'll have a, a cockeyed seal or whatever and it'll all look, all, all look horrendous and not sit right. So I need to get it up in the air on stands level then we can get these two wheels off and then we need to get the car stripped down. So the wing's got to come back off, headlight out, grill out. The door's probably going to have to come off and probably been put back on and off quite a few times so I can get everything lined up. But I'm going to take it off initially so I've got as much room as I can to work on getting the old seal off. Um, carpet, seats, all that sort of thing's probably got to come out because I don't want to risk setting anything I like when we're welding. So yeah, it's going to be quite an involved job this one. and. Yeah, I'm um, dreading it. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna waffle anymore. Let's crack on, get this thing up in the air, start getting it stripped down. Right, with the old Puma up in the air, we need to get the headlight out, which means we've got to take the grill out, which is held on by two, two torques, one there, one there. Headlight is one torques there, one torques there. And you've got like a twisty clip, which you have to undo at this end, which you just twist once you've undone that torques. Once that's out, we can then get the bumper um, undone from the wing. I'm not gonna take the bumper off, but I'm gonna take, obviously take it off the wing. And then we can get the wing unbolted, which is a series of 10 mils all the way around. One, two, three. I think there's one under there as well, four. There's one in the shut, and there's one or two underneath there. And obviously a few that go up into the bumper. So I think I'm going to start off with that, get all that off. And then we can, I'll cut back in and we can look at how we're going to get the door off. Um, I'm not taking the door off one of these before. It looks like it's on pins, so it shouldn't be too difficult in theory. But obviously it's not been off for a long while, so never know what's going to happen so let's get this front sorted out and then uh, we'll carry on from there There is the wing off. Now, you know those 10 mil sockets that always go missing and you never find them ever again? Look what I found under the wing on a bolt. <laughs> My missing quarter drive 10 mil socket that's been missing for ages, so I'm all chuffed about that. Anyway, I digress. The wing is now off, as you can see, that was pretty easy. Headlight out, grill out. Next thing we've got to do is get this door off. Now, 
it's held on with pins in here hopefully you can see that all right this one goes up and that one goes down i've also got this electrical connection which you just twist this and that should pop off like that so that's that off one connector now before we do the pins on the door hinges we've got to go open inside the door and take the check strap off which is that one torx bolt just there so we'll take that one off so that's out of the way not connected and then we can knock those hinge pins out and hopefully get the door off what i'm thinking is having the door open or at least half open and hanging it off the rafter of the roof so when i undo them pins it don't just fall out and then that will give me something to uh hopefully manhandle it down with it's not heavy it's just i don't want it to fall on the ground when i'm trying to knock those pins out so Either that, or we'll knock the pins out, actually thinking about it, we'll knock the pins out if we can with the door shut, because then it's latched at the other end. Yeah, that's probably a better idea. I can then knock those pins out with the door latched, so it won't fall anywhere. And then once we've got the pins out, then we can un unlatch it from the handle and then just lift it off. So I think we'll probably actually do that, thinking about it. I'll get a check strap off, and then we'll go ahead and tr try and uh, knock these pins out. They've got little circuits on them we've got to take off as well. So should be interesting. Let's see what we can do. Right, I've got the um, to uh, the uh, check strap unbolted from inside. I'm going to try and pop these little clips off without losing them. Very easy to come off, just little half moon sort of circuit type things. Actually, that bottom one hasn't got one on it. <laughs> Only the top one's got one on it. And then I've got a couple of punches here that I'm hoping it's going to do the job knocking these through with any luck. Hopefully, I won't be too stuck. Famous last words. I think it's moving, but I'm not sure. I think it's moving so basically I'm going to carry on like that knocking those backwards and forwards and hopefully getting this door off with any luck so I won't bore you the uh, board or speed the boredom of doing that that looks not good behind there just noticed quite a bit of rust behind that bit of whatever that is so I'm gonna have to look at that too this is gonna be the case with this car I think it's gonna be um, one step forward and quite a lot of steps back quite a few times I think but we'll see we'll see let's um, get you on some time lapse and we'll see if we can get this door off rep not good <laughs> I've been battling this for ages now and as you can see the pin is virtually out it's actually loose in the hole but not quite enough to let the middle of the hinge out 
So I'm just battling this final little bit and hopefully then we'll have the door off. So I'm not going to time lapse anymore. I'll come back to you once I've got this out. Right, I didn't get it on camera unfortunately, but I, I haven't, still haven't got the pin right out as you can see. I thought I'll just give it a whirl and unlatch it and see whether I can wiggle it out with it, with it uh, still there. And sure enough, it fell out from the end. Now that, that hinge pin is all the way out there. It's just stuck in that very top bit. So I am going to get that out, clean it up and whatever so it goes back in easier. But the door is off. Woohoo! So now we can see the full seal inside and out without having to keep opening and closing the door, which is going to be a lot easier to obviously cut the old one off and obviously start fitting the new one. So um not really sure what the next step is now possibly getting out that driver's seat so we can fold the carpet back so i'm not going to set anything alight that might be a good idea um yeah probably that do that next right with most of the side now stripped down and the seat out as you can see there i'm gonna to have to take the back seat out and the court panel trim off at some point too um but first of all i want to actually get this seal cut off now you can see the new seal underneath here I'll show you this this is from Express Panels. It's a nice bit of uh, panel work there, so they seem to do a pretty good job of that. So that's uh, hopefully going to be all right. Now you can see obviously how far it comes up. Um, it comes up to just underneath this hinge, which is where I've drawn that line, but it doesn't fit over the top, obviously with the old one there in place. So what I'm going to do first is cut it lower. I'm going to cut probably through here and I'm going to put a masking tape line probably level with the bottom of this door go straight across and we'll cut it from there obviously I want to try and keep as much of the original quarter panel as I can um, so I'm, if I can get away with obviously just going straight across and leaving it that that high I will because um, obviously the lower down it is the easier it's going to be to blend back in hopefully as far as the joins concerned now obviously I don't know how much of it I'm going to need height wise here um, because of what I'm going to find inside and I know there's rot inside it that's inevitable um, look at it from the back side it looks pretty horrendous to be honest with you so we are going to be finding more rot I know that for a fact so I'm going to uh, get a, a tape line across there I'm going to go straight across with a grinder I don't want to go too deep because I don't want to cut anything good that might be inside still and then I need to go along and you can see along here they're quite um, pr well pronounced all these little spot welds I need to drill those out you can see them all the way along there they go right the way along so I'm going to get all those drilled out. They run all, all along this bottom edge under here as well, on the lip underneath. That's going to probably be a bit more of a pain to see where they are, but I'm going to cut the two ends first with a slot with a, with a grinder, because at the moment the panel is held solid with those spot welds. It will allow me to cut those bits easier. That's my thinking anyway. Um, and then I'll get onto the spot welds, and then once I've done all the spot welds, in theory, the whole seal should just fall off in my lap and have a pile of rust everywhere <laughs> so let's um i just got to do this because i'm dreading it and i keep putting it off and keep putting it off and i can't put it off no more so let's get it done and uh, we'll see what we're fighting underneath
Right, well, you would have seen me celebrating at the end of that bit of time lapse, but I'm not sure I should have been celebrating. <laughs> um, this is pretty bad. I'll just run you... Well, look at the floor for a start. That's all what fell out as I was drilling and hammering the seal off. And if I get the light under here a bit further, it is pretty extensive, the rust. Right way through to the inner seal, so it's going to need all the inner sorting out as well. So, yeah, I'm going to need to order some steel because I haven't got any at the moment. I've run out, and I'm going to need me to make up a fair few bits for this inner. Now, originally, this piece curved under. There's some bits of it left under there. You can probably just about see, and that connected to the outer seal via spot welds. Now, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm on in an iron at the moment where we took just cut this off level and treat the area that's there and leave it alone or whether to cut this off level and make a new piece that goes underneath. I'm not sure what to do about that at the moment because obviously that is part of the structure of the car. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I don't think an inner seal is available for these as far as I'm aware. So I'm going to have to make whatever I have to do if I choose to replace it. Um, yeah that's where I'm at at the moment so I'm just taking stock I'm probably going to have a big clear up and maybe stop well yeah I'll have to have a big clear up then I'll start cleaning up all these surfaces with a, a wire brush and a grinder I've got a piece of uh, seal that I've left on the corner there that I cut off because I think it's actually stuck with um, sealer onto that bit so I need to prise that off there was a couple of spot welds along there but not really much um, yeah so this bit's obviously going to be the hardest, remaking this piece under here. Um, I'm going to need to cut that up a bit higher, remake the inner, because that's where the handbrake cable bolts to the back side of this under here. You can see the end of the bolt just there. You can see that very well. It's a bit hard to show on camera, but it is very crusty. So, um, Not totally unexpected, but maybe slightly worse than I thought it was going to be. Um, this arch section actually isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought that was going to be totally gone, but that's actually not too bad. So we might get away with that, clean that up, get some rust, rust uh, treatment on it, and we might be all right with that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have a little, little clean up, and uh, I'll come back to you when I've got a bit more progress. I know I said I was expecting rust, but this is, this is bad. This is seriously bad. Um, I'm questioning my sanity at the moment of whether I'm doing the right thing, even attempting to repair this. Um, as you would have seen in the time up there, I've now got the middle part of the seal off. Um, that's pretty muddled and you can buy this section so that's an option which I'm probably going to go then if I carry on um, this is what we're left with I'll just show you obviously you've got that that in the middle bit out there and 
we are down to the very inner now this is the carpet so we're we're down to basically what's on the side of the um, floor this is where it meets the floor you can see it's rotten there. there's a hole right through to the inside of the car there's a hole there there's a hole there um, this bit at the front's not too bad a little bit of flaky rust underneath there but nothing a bit of rust treatment won't cure coming towards the back is where it gets more ugly as you would expect got another hole there this reinforcer which is a pretty lumpy bit of metal has actually rotted through as you can see there there and the bit that I said to you about where the handbrake cable bolts on doesn't exist anymore I touched it and the whole lot fell off in my hand and disintegrated on the floor as you can see so yeah we are in a bit of trouble here I think it's like peeling back the layers of an onion because obviously each layer reveals each uh, another lot of corrosion where they're sort of sandwiched together this is the main chassis leg under here as you can see and this panel here comes down and then welds to it and obviously has a bit that comes down a bit further um, which is where that um, handbrake cable should bolt onto so what I'm thinking at the moment is this bit is well I mean you can buy a hole in a quarter but I'm not doing that because that's going to be mega, mega money I'm thinking at the moment cutting this off across here and down get rid of all the rot and just leave that bit there that's not really serving much purpose as far as I can tell it only goes up to just inside the top of the quarter there so it's not like a mega big panel so I'm thinking maybe just leaving that bit cut obviously treat it all oh I need to treat it once it's cut because it'll be clean metal so I'll just paint it so that it stays protecting it's out of the way of any more corrosion it can't then corrode again because it's not going to be touching anything that's my thinking with that if I do that that then allows me to get to this panel behind here um, and obviously cut away all this corrosion that's formed and put a new piece of panel obviously on there join it obviously inside the quarter panel up here and then plug weld it onto the side of the chassis rail which is how it would have been originally it would have been spot welded but obviously I'll plug weld it because of access um, and doing it that way may possibly make make it that I don't have to take the axle out because I haven't got to get a welder in the back side I can do it all from this side inside the quarter panel and obviously drop it down and then cut it to shape so that it follows on with the bottom of the seal along here so it's just got to go straight the way along up to the end of the arch and then up I'll have to check that on the other side but I'm pretty sure that's how it goes so yeah um, not good not good at all um, I knew it was going to be bad which is maybe why I was dreading it so much but this is this has got to be one of the worst rust repairs I've taken on I think um, this piece here and what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut the outer skin and I'll remake this lower section um, and obviously then that'll be strong again and that won't be any corrosion obviously whatever's behind it I'll have to address once I get this part off but there's no point in me even trying to patch that because the whole thing has got corrosion in it and if it's gone through there and there yeah, it's only a matter of time before that goes through because it will carry on eating it away if you leave it there and obviously this does actually touch the outer seal so if that carries on corroding it's basically just going to corrode my new panel which then makes it totally pointless what I'm doing so yeah, that is where I'm at at the moment. Um, I've ordered a sheet of steel for all these various bits that I've got to make. Um, the question now is, do I order one of those as well? It's going to be about 10 days to get one of those, supposedly. Um, maybe longer. So yeah, that's the stage I'm at at the moment. I may have to sort of stop here and, and uh, wait for supplies to arrive and just start sort of trimming a few bits off here and there. So I can obviously uh, see what's going on from uh, a better point of view once I get these bits out of the way. Whole cars, eh? Who'd have them? <laughs> right then, that is going to be it for this episode on Mech Tech. I think it's fair to say that the old Puma has seen better days at the moment. It is, uh, hmm, yeah. I knew it was going to be bad, which is probably why I was dreading doing it, but 
that's pretty bad. I think that's probably the worst rust repair I'm, I've faced so far in my sort of uh, time of working on cars and whatever else. Obviously it is fixable, it's just, it's gonna take a little bit longer and it's gonna take a little bit more materials and a little bit more money and all the rest of it. So let's just hope that the other side is all right because I haven't even looked at that yet and I didn't at the moment because about this side is. <laughs> I want to go do, concentrate on one side at a time. So obviously I am gonna try and repair it as best as I possibly can. It might not be factory, but it will be strong by the end of it. That is the main thing and it won't have any more rot in it, which is obviously what we need for an MOT. So I've ordered some metal that is on the way. I've also found out that this panel here is actually available. Now, it's a bit daft really, because this is a middle panel, which don't really do a lot to be honest with you. And the main panel that runs down the side of the floor isn't available. So the bit that I've got a repair on that I've got a make and I can buy this section now I'm wondering whether I should buy this section 100 and odd quid 105 quid or whether I should try and just I mean along this bit it's actually absolutely, absolutely fine so I could actually just cut along here from halfway down and repair this lower bit and put that back on again so I'm thinking possibly doing that because obviously the time frame to have one of these made you have to wait for it is about probably two weeks and I ain't really got two weeks, I need to get this done. So possibly I may end up repairing this. It might not look totally factory, but you're never gonna see it. It's gonna be inside the seal panel. So, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. So that may be going back on. Um, I've not quite decided on that yet. I have got some metal on order, um, a sheet of metal that should be arriving today with any luck. So I can hopefully carry on with getting the seeing this seal cut out and sort it out and obviously then build the layers back up again you've got to do it in layers there's no point in just slapping a new one over the top because all the rubbish that's underneath and you just write it out again so that's probably the biggest downfall with a lot of rust repairs is people just cover up what's there and don't treat the source which obviously then makes it all rot again in a matter of months or whatever or years so anyway i'm waffling hopefully we can get the old puma back in one place again one piece again even and get it back on the road where it needs to be but i think it's going to take a little bit longer unfortunately so anyway if you do like what you see projects like this car restoration all my old rubbish that i've got on the channel <laughs> then make sure you do four things for me like subscribe share and hit that notification bell it's all free it costs you absolutely nothing and it really really helps me out on the channel i do really appreciate it as i said in the last video 75 percent of my viewers aren't subscribed so if you haven't subscribed already just hit that button for us if you have subscribed Thank you very much. I do really, really appreciate it. And if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I will see you again next time. Oh, also Instagram, mech underscore tech 1985 and Facebook, mech dash tech for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. There we go. Have a look at those two. Cheers, guys.